you're about to watch an interview with me and Dave Bergantino. Now, you might not know him, but he's the author of Wes Craven's New Nightmare. And he also wrote some other Nightmare on Elm Street books from uh, the series Freddy Krueger's, Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror. And he's also done some stuff in the Freddy vs. Jason uh, universe and uh, on the, in the Friday the 13th universe itself. So, yeah, let's start this interview right now. Um, so, yeah, my first question is just, how are you? How are you doing nowadays? I I'm, I'm doing great. I'm super busy and um, doing all sorts of new things and, you know, generally having fun. Okay, that's cool. And uh, what are you up to, like, with projects and work and stuff? Well, it's a bunch of different things. I, um, I'm i actually attached to uh, two new horror console games. Um, actually, three. Uh, I'm working with um, a guy who did a big horror film or a horror game last year that we're, we're, I've gotten two um, classic uh, horror licenses that we're going to build new games out of. Uh, it's all in process, so I, I can't name names right now. No, okay. um, yeah. Yeah, and then it. there's an original game that I'm doing narrative design, and it's a really interesting project because it's not just having a good story for a horror video game. It's, it's actually more of a... Uh, an interactive narrative so it's something that changes every time you play so that's going to be interesting and then i start teaching writing at a university uh here uh later this year oh that's pretty good yeah and then a bunch of stuff in between just little stuff i've got an interactive tv pilot that i wrote for another company uh this fall that we're going to shoot the pilot for mm, in about in about a month and then hopefully I'm back into novels. I'm supposed to uh, get uh, my first novel deal in like 10 years in oh, the next cool. couple of months. Yeah, 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 very, very exciting. So uh, you're going to get back to writing more soon? Yeah, most of it's interesting. After the last many years of primarily uh, doing video game uh, production, uh, and even some video game writing, but mostly production and some creative and design. Uh, this year, everything is turning into, is really writing based. So, uh, heck, I was even approached yesterday from a team doing a horror game in Romania that happened to run across my profile. So they want me to write <laughs> a horror game. So... Um, a lot of things are based in writing this year, which I'm, I'm, I'm pretty thrilled about because I wrote a game for Netties like two years ago, and I spent 12 to 15 hours a day chained to a desk writing for the first time in years, and I loved it. You know, just just being lost in my head in this world for uh, that right, long yeah. day was just fantastic. Yeah, I see what you mean because I write... Uh some screenplays for my own uh, like short films that I do every once in a while. And like right now I'm currently writing a screenplay and I'm just totally lost in the characters and stuff. And like, how is it going to end and everything? It's, it's amazing process always. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing about, the thing about um, say vi video games is it's inherently collaborative. You, you can't do it on your own. You need a million people no. to do it. Whereas writing, it's just you. You can't yeah. sit and there's nobody telling you, you must write. There's no, oh, well, I can't write this next sentence until somebody else does something. There's yeah. nothing. And so it's total responsibility. And then, you know, when you're in the zone, it's total immersion. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I see what you mean. Like one of my questions was going to be, uh, would you be interested in writing? Like, of course, with the last Halloween uh, movie last year, it was a big hit. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll bring back Robert England and, uh, had our Lang Cam and stuff, you know, for uh, the old nostalgia era now, uh, for another Nightmare on Elm Street. But would you be interested in writing a novelization uh, for a new Nightmare on Elm Street film? I, um, you know, I'm easy. I, you know, somebody wants me to write, especially a novelization on one of the classics, um, would love that. Uh, on the other hand, um, you know, to some extent, my real interest now, given that I've worked with so, you know, like I, you know, Sean Cunningham lives around the corner and we've been friends and I know Clyde yeah. Barker and all. That. I want to play in my own worlds now, not necessarily other people's worlds, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and so I probably do it if somebody came around, 
Uh, but meanwhile, um, you know, I, the last year I started two new novels and they were both originals and they were both very different from the kinds of stuff that I've done before. They were still horror, but well, one was like, you know, sort of my high concept, um, sort of cheesy novels like earlier. And then the other one was supposed to be like the real novel, something that takes right. to write and that I let the, let the characters create themselves as I'm writing them versus just outline, outline, outline pull, paragraphs, pull, chapters, blah, yeah. book. So, um, so I, I have started that process. What I'd love to do, which is what I tried to do before with the, uh, with uh, Freddy versus Jason and with, um, actually at one point I, I, I was part of a pitch with the guy who wrote, uh, uh, with Todd Farmer, who, who wrote uh, Texas Chainsaw, I'm sorry, Jason X. Um, <laughs> he, he pulled me into, he was pitching a new Halloween movie, what would have been Halloween 8, the, the, the one that turned out to be a social media one. And my version of the of a new Halloween movie was actually a prequel that went back to that started was was uh, Michael's time in the uh, insane asylum and what the truth of Loomis really was. Oh, so that, there's that's actually that's a dark backstory to Loomis I came up with, and they looked at it and went, "No, oh, you can't do that." And like, oh, but I want. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I'm I'm a big novelization fan. I read a ton of them i have a ton of them that i still need to read <laughs> yeah and like i always wonder how do how do how does the studio approach you you know i mean you really didn't write them any novels before west craven if i remember correctly no that was new nightmare was my very first yeah so like how did they um uh did they find you to write the uh novel yeah, that's, that was a super lucky situation, to be honest. Um, I, I, I think I did well once I had the opportunity, but the opportunity was incredibly lucky, and it also took years to get there. So what had happened is I had, I was losing a job at, at, a, at my first job in Hollywood, and what I do when I lose jobs, what I did when I lose jobs, and because companies were going out of business, not because people were firing me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, you know, people like me. Um, but uh, they, I, I wrote, I, I, when that happens, I go, well, if I was going to do absolutely anything as the next thing that I would do, what would I do? Because, um, yeah, you know, the normal process of looking for work is looking for work, but I like to take the opportunity to go, well, if I could do anything, this is what I'm going to do. So I decided that I wanted to write a book about the Friday the 13th movies. And it was this sprawling satire of film theory and criticism that I wrote 400 pages of. Um, <clears throat> and it was gonna be about 800 to 1,000 pages of a coffee table book about okay, yeah, awesome. the Friday the 13th movies. One chapter of about 100 pages for each book. It had trivia. It had all these weird rationalizations of why things happened in the, in the um, in the movies that were really stupid and but funny and all this <laughs> and photographs whole nine yards and uh so i managed to get an agent for that and because it was sort of this you know re sort of reductive look at at horror films and and their cliches you know like scream um but way before scream um it caught some people's attention and then they were making new nightmare which was the first major thing to be you know, looking at the cliches of horror. And they said, well, we like your book. We can't sell your book, but you'd be really good for this new movie we've got going on. Um, and and then the one thing led to another and they hired me for that book. But, but throughout this process, I had written 400 pages. I had a book deal. The book deal crashed and burned. I went broke and went back living with my parents in Cleveland and ended up calling people in Hollywood, in New York, and just saying, hi, I'm me, I have this. And, you know, the I'm, I had Frank Mancuso Jr. who produced the Friday, early Friday the 13th movies. He yeah. was on my side. And then finally I reached out to a guy who was heading up licensing at New Line because licensing, uh, sorry, New Line had taken over the property. And I pitched him my book and he paused for a moment. He goes, wow. That's a better idea than our book. 
<laughs> and then it just started from there. And then they realized they couldn't sell my book, but they on Friday the 13th, and they said, well, try this. And that's how I got to A New Nightmare. And yeah, why it's the first book I've ever done. And it's not like I did five books. Like I'm no Alan Dean Foster. I didn't write a bunch no, of no, okay. books. <laughs> yeah. And then they gave me another book because they knew I could finish it. I got super lucky. Yeah, you did. I mean, it's not just the, uh, hey, here's a screenplay, novelize it, and we'll publish it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it can get really complicated. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, the process, and, and right now actually, is a, it's especially with the way publishing has changed since those days where it was all physical books and now there's all yeah. digital publishing. Self publishing is very legit. Uh oh. Are you still there? Yeah, I am. Okay. Oh, there, because the screen went blank for a moment. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, because of all of this, um, it's actually really hard to, it's harder now to get published. If, it, if this were today, I probably would not have gotten that book deal. No, okay. And like you briefly um, in the comments from like uh, your post, you briefly mentioned that it was supposed to be like a coffee table book and something else, like just a novelization. Right. So, so what happens when they, when the agent came to me, um, who is, is basically was New Line's book, uh, was it, no, it's Paramount's book packager or New Line's book packager. She said, okay, the book publisher who licensed the, the, the movie only wants a, um, straight up novelization. Just, you know, take the screenplay, adapt it, you know, into a novel form, be done yeah. with it. New Line, however, because of the inter the weird, you know, reality, uh, fake reality of the movie, wanted something more documentary-like, something that fit the movie more creatively, and they wanted like a, a big coffee table book with a bunch of photographs and and documentary material, no actual novel, just right. like a scrapbook, like if somebody took a scrapbook of the events of yeah, the movie. like a um, like a storybook or something. Yeah, but but without the story, it's it was sort of like more of like a I don't know if you're familiar with this, but something called Griffin and Sabine. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, familiar. it's it's an old, it was one of the first sort of transmedia books where instead of just reading the book, you would open to a page and then there would be like a, a little envelope taped to the page and you had to open oh, the envelope right, and there was yeah. a card inside and it had, you know, some writing in it. And so they built the story based on actual things that were in the book versus just the, just prose. So... She goes, they want this. And I said, well, okay, I can do that. I can do that. But I have this third idea that brings them all together. And she goes, go for it. <clears throat> Cause they don't like each other's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I did actually three pitches. One that was the coffee table book that New Line wanted. One that was the just straight up novelization approach that uh, Tor wanted. And then finally, um, I came up with that context of a, of a, di of a diary, um, which is the, really the frame of the book. It, it alternates between diary, uh, chapters and straight up novelization chapters. Yeah. And then I built this parallel story to the, to the movie where I thought I was getting my big break. And I basically uncover a conspiracy that everybody who touches this movie dies and yeah. that. And then I, I feed into the notion of the movie where um, Wes has to do this to seal Freddy back up because the movies have become really crappy. And so yeah. what's the crappiest thing about a movie is it's novelization, usually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I then was challenged to create the best novelization that ever in order to help seal Freddy back up. And that's essentially the, the parallel story of the, of the novel. And they went, oh, that. <laughs> and and as a sign of like this is probably it's probably my most successful novel as a sign of this, um, you know, you write a novel, especially when you've got a uh, you know, well-known character like Freddie and a story. Um, normally, a studio will just tear that apart because you have to follow very strict rules. Yeah. They only changed one paragraph in the entire book. Really? It's the least editing I've ever had on a book. 
they they changed one paragraph and that's only because i cited a movie that wasn't a new line movie oh right yeah and that's all they wanted me to change other than that the the book is is exactly what i wrote that that's insane like usually there's like a lot more change stuff and edited right yeah i wrote i wrote i mean all of my books have been substantially edited that's just part of the process i got into a fight with a publisher over one book and i what the 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 book that hit the market half the second half of the book is entirely rewritten by someone else and i didn't oh. know until i and i didn't know it until it it, it it hit the shelves and does it say like written by david bergantino or also uh an also just, other author no no it's just me they just oh. have my credit on it but because it was sort of a contentious situation they decided to just skip the part where they told me that they were just going to have somebody else finish it oh <laughs> like thanks love you <laughs> <laughs> but are like are like proud of it that it has your name on it or is like terribly written and you're like oh why is on my name <laughs> well I, I, those book well actually that book is not one of my favorite anyway from a from a, an idea standpoint luckily the of the two books in that series that i wrote the other book they didn't touch and i think that's a better book just sort of overall anyway and then i also have another book that has my name on it that i didn't write because they accidentally left my name on the on the uh template Oh. <laughs> and apparently it's 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 got bad reviews on Amazon, but I, I, I actually did a, a podcast for somebody last year because it's one of their favorite books and they thought it was me. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, nope, not me. And then I ended up doing a whole podcast of the books that are mine. Oh, right. <laughs> like now I wish I had written that book. <laughs> That's where I. <laughs> It must be really weird, like writing or not writing something, but it's still in your name and then gets bad reviews as well. Like that's yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the time, it was really like, oh, because I was right in the middle, like really starting my my writing career and I didn't really want this. No. And I, I also felt bad for the uh, I used to say at the time that the author dodged a bullet like the real author. Nobody knows who wrote it. I certainly don't know who wrote it. And if it's getting such bad reviews, then they dodged a bullet. You know, meanwhile, it's one of those books that people come back to and go, hey, this is actually pretty wacky. And they start and they like it. And now I've got the credit for that. Not this this other writer who. All right. <laughs> serves it. Yeah. Uh, 